So I'm going to ask you yes or no questions. Please just answer yes or no. Ms. New, do you believe the federal government should reinstate any federal mask mandates, for example, on airplanes? Yes. Do you support ongoing mask mandates on public transportation, like subways and buses? Yes. Should the COVID vaccine be required for public school children? Yes. Mr. Jones, same questions. I, it's going to be tough for me to remember all three. So. Do you believe the federal government should reinstate any federal mask mandates, for example, on airplanes? If, if public health officials determine that that's appropriate, then yes. Do you support ongoing mask mandates on public transportation? Yes. And should the COVID vaccine be required for school children? Absolutely. Ms. Simon? Yes, yes, and yes. Ms. Rivera? Yes to, to all of the above. Ms. Holtzman? Ditto. <laughs> and Mr. Goldman? I'm not a public health expert. I would follow the public health experts, but I do believe that every, uh, every child in, in school should be vaccinated. We have to follow the science. This is uh, debate footage for candidates running for, I believe, New York's 10th Congressional, Congressional District. And apologies for the quality of it that was recorded on a phone. Uh, unanimity of thought there, uh, no disagreement. I, I guess you could find a little bit of disagreement between people who are the, the candidates just saying yes, absolutely to all those things. And then the candidates saying yes, presuming that's what the public health officials want, which I actually find to be even more of a cop out because what if the public health experts as d disagree, as they do disagree on these things? And what you have no, you think you have no political, like your job is just to follow whatever the, the health officials say. I mean, what about all the times the health, well, you're not exercising any independent judgment for whether you think these things should be required based on what public health officials say. It's very frustrating. I mean, I, me. I think there's a, there's a line there. Obviously, I would also want to be for, informed about what the public health mm -hmm. officials say. I understand the frustration with some of the inconsistency that has come from public health officials, mm -hmm. and I have agreed with a lot of that criticism here in the context of this show. But I don't know that I agree that it's a worse answer to say I want to be more informed and not just see I would not as a lone a, human being. A, a, a <laughs> senator or presidential candidate saying I would I would bow to the whims of the national security experts on whether to get out of Afghanistan. Well. I, I, I do put somewhat more faith in public health experts than national security ex experts, in part because public health experts are as diverse as my friend who's a doctor or my own physician, mm -hmm. things like that. And that is what I rely on when I'm making my own decisions. I definitely am looking to people who know more about public health than I am, regardless of whether or not they're institutionalists like uh, Anthony Fauci. I do think that part of also what might be motivating some of them, at least it's what would motivate me if I were in that position, is the fact that advice is changing over time and can be difficult to keep up with, I wouldn't want to commit to something if public health officials did revise some of their past advice and did acknowledge mistakes in the past. I would want to make sure that my position was flexible enough to involve as, evolve as we learn more about various vaccines, what their efficacy is, the efficacy of masks versus mm -hmm. filters versus other kinds of interventions. What I'm really struck by in that clip is how ineffective that kind of format is and unpacking some of those issues. Yes or no answers don't really get to the bottom of the concerns that I think everybody sitting up there knows that the population that they're hoping to govern has. Well, and the 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 yes from all of them on frankly, even though you know I, I personally uh, find the mass to be the, the most um, uh, frustrating uh, or, or difficult to follow mitigation, that's for me personally. I must concede, and I can't believe any of these people didn't raise or disagree, the fact that the, the vaccine for uh, is not doing very much at all, um, possibly less than the, in fact, quite likely less than the mass, or at least the very durable mass, to, to keep down spread. We, we know now that being vaccinated is, you know, not we've talked about on the show a thousand times. Um, it, I, I don't hear anyone making the, argue, the counter argument or even saying, trying to claim that it is the case. The vaccines are not stopping the spread. You can, you can be vaccinated, contract COVID, spread it. Uh, you know, at best, we're looking at in terms of spread. It does, right, of course, still help for, for severe disease in, especially in immunocompromised or older people categories. Um, you know, at best, maybe it's making you less sick and then you're less contagious for a, a, a period of time. But there's significant, seems to be significant asymptomatic spread anyway. Yeah. So like, so I can't imagine requiring this vaccine for children for, uh, in terms of not wanting to have outbreaks in schools, you know, like all, all the other vaccines that we're requiring for schools, it's because we want to stop the outbreak of that kind of 
disease, yeah. and, and that's mm -hmm. how those vaccines work. And that, look, I wish it was otherwise, but that's just not the way it is in this case. So the fact that they, and they all just gloss over that, they didn't even acknowledge it in that, and, yeah. and maybe the format so, doesn't. Yeah. You know, well, one, one answer that I wish politicians would get a little bit more comfortable with saying is, I want to do what works. And unfortunately, while we a lot of us thought that vac vac uh, vaccinations would have a more of effect on transmission than it does, they don't. And in fact, masking, if not done with a certain kind of mask and not done consistently, has a diminished effect as well. So if it's possible for the ages where it's appropriate for people to have high quality masks available in schools, I support that entirely. I would leave the vaccination decision up to the parents, although I would strongly encourage it because especially if your kid is in a high risk category. I want them to have good outcomes if they do get COVID. And I would also like to talk about interventions that are not sufficiently talked about like ventilators. And so to mm -hmm. that end, I wanted mm -hmm. to uh, share this study on schools uh, that indicated that um, there was a very good effect of other kinds of interventions, including ventilations. Quote, this effect was even more pronounced among staff where lifting requirements, uh, sorry, this is, this is about, um, uh, the, 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 actually the effect of masking, masking in school. So like we were saying, right. um, you know, not all masking is ma made equal. Uh, yeah, this study was a very favorable result from masking. Right. Uh, this and is a study from, um, well, I, I saw it, or you shared it in, in Slack for us, but I, I know this, uh, this epidemiologist, uh, Eleanor Murray, um, and she's, she's a very, you know, I've kind of disagreed with her judgment in the past, but she's a very pro-masking individual. And this is a study. Now, it's a preprint of a study. It's not been peer-reviewed yet. It was looking at um, school districts in, uh, I believe, in Boston. I'm looking at it. It was in Massachusetts. And uh, they compared, a, yeah, it was Boston. They compared a, a, a Boston versus Chelsea. They compared um, a, a, a district where they stopped enforcing mask mandates and a district where they continue to enforce them. 2021 to 2022. And yeah, this found a favorable result for continuing to have mask mandates. Now, you know, I people I think I think people should take that with a grain of salt. I've not yet seen any pushback right. to the study. So it, so very very specifically, um, were lifting requirements, lifting the mask requirements was associated with an additional 81.7 uh, uh, percent uh, percent I think incident of COVID COVID-19 cases per 1000 staff over 50. Not weeks. percent. I think it was 81 cases or uh, Okay. Okay, sorry, the, the, the stats are a little bit jumbled here, but there was a significant uh, reduced incidence of COVID in the context of masking. So I wanna ask you, Robbie, like, what do you make of that if we're continuing to get evidence that assuming that the masking is implemented correctly, as uncomfortable as it might be to you, would you support you know, schools or other kind of environments requiring masking in order to keep the incidence of COVID spread down a great deal. It was especially noticeable this effect among teachers who are going to be more vulnerable given their age and the likelihood that they have other kinds of um, uh, health issues. I mean, the, my frank honest is no, I wouldn't require them even if it's found to have some uh, health benefit. Um, I, why I'm, I'm curious to see you know, more informed people if they can find some pushback to the study would be that it would surprise me if, if uh, a result this good for the mass was found, given that we're still talking about, I presume that it's, because I, I don't think any school districts required the better quality masks. So I'm assuming the masks in contention here are, the, are just whatever masks you can find. So it would actually surprise me if they had this good an outcome maybe it is the case that would that would be i think that would be actually reversing even what some public health officials now are saying about how good the cloth masks are oh, um, yeah. so i i, I want to know more about yeah what quality masks are being used but you know this they write in the study the conclusion masking is a relatively low cost but effective intervention and look i'm just going to raise again masking is not a low cost intervention for everyone some some kids have much a much harder time understanding when masks are being uh, worn um, if they're learning to read, if they, you know, hearing their, everyone, classrooms can be chaotic places. It, everyone in, when you're talking and you're masked, instinctively does the, I, well, I didn't hear you, and then pulls down their mask to, to, to be better heard. It's not, like a, it's a not thing. Not everyone. Look, and that's why I suggested that a response would be, that I would give, is that, again, depending on the age and appropriateness and the quality of the masks, of course, I would recommend that people do what they can to keep the, their teachers and their community members safe. But we, we've recognized the benefits of one-way masking now, and I, I think it is absolutely appropriate. It should be an individual judgment. All of these things, in my view, should be individual judgment. If you, if you determine for yourself that you should wear a 
You should wear a high quality mask all the time and you should really not remove it and that's what's best for you. You should be able to do that. Can I ask you a question? Do you think that um, prohibitions against uh, smoking indoors were wrong? Do you think we should still be able to smoke everywhere like we used to? I think in private, no, in restaurants, because the, sure, the argument... Sure, I would allow it in private restaurants, what, what, yes. What I would allowed be against it? smoking bans on private property, sure. You, so what, what motivated, what the, the hook was for smoking bans was the idea that the people who worked in these, in, these establishments mm -hmm. didn't have the option just to opt out, and that it was a, a workplace safety issue. Now, you can say that that was a pretext or whatever, but that was the hook, and I wonder if you agree with that and then feel similarly about teachers who are in the situation where they can't avoid. But I think if it's a pu public school, it's, it's different. It's a, it's a, we, we have more right to uh, we as citizens to prescribe what the rules are going to be for a public institution. So we can, I, I think it's a little different for employees there. In a private setting, no, I would leave it, I would let the employer set those rules. Um, and if you're an employee who doesn't like those rules, you should work elsewhere. Different in my view, for the public space, a public school being a public space where we are prescribing what the rules should be, there I, I, I have more, yeah, well, there should not be smoking in, in schools. I don't think um, at this stage of the pandemic, mm -hmm. given that we do have vaccination and you can, you can vaccinate yourself if you're, a, if you're a teacher, if you're an older American, if you're an immunocompromised person, and you can wear a mask yourself, um, that that overrides the rights of of the individual, of the students, to not get vaccinated or to not wear a mask if it's uncomfortable for them or they really have trouble socializing wearing them. So in that case, I don't think the balance tip. And, and honestly, I would be surprised if the benefit even tips as far in the direction of this being beneficial as the study suggested. But I, I note that it is a study strongly going against you know what I, I was seeing from the, the data so far. So we'll. We'll see if it, it holds up. But and I think you were going to say earlier about the having better ventilation. You know, let's do yeah. that. Let's have better ventilation. Let's well, that requires more funding. This is the problem. I do think it's well, a, got a tons problem. Of funding. I think it's a problem that the state has said you have to take the vaccine. That is a cost only to you mm -hmm. and your kind of personal liberty and your bodily autonomy, and not emphasize the kinds of things that require interventions on the behalf of the government that are much more substantive, like retrofitting all of these schools, which are long overdue for having better ventilation because of the amount of asthma that's in dust and in the health issues that have already come even before COVID. They don't want to do that, so they put it on you. I do think that masks are in the middle. I think that masks don't require the kind of um, intrusion on your bodily autonomy that vaccinations do. They're temporary. They are I know people subjectively have the belief that they are very onerous. I grew up differently, I guess, than some people in the United States, and I wash, ration my water, and I have experienced a different way of living in the world where I don't think a mask is that big of an inconvenience. Well, but I, I respect I, that I think some you, people you are have very... To, you have to concede that for masks, it, it runs a... It's, it's very individual specific, specific. I know there are plenty of people who don't mind wearing them at all, who think it's... It's no big deal, and there are people who hate wearing them and consider it a big deal. I'm, I lean more in that direction. Vacci at least for vaccination, there is a history of requiring vaccination in this country from a legal standpoint in various circumstances. Now, I still don't, I don't think this vaccine should be required in virtually any circumstance. But uh, I, there, where, there's no, where's the tradition of like, forcing people to cover their faces for mass stretches of time. Why tradition is the metric that we should be using as opposed to what's the bigger intrusion? What's the more permanent change to your, to your well, body? Well, if we're talking about whether it's an intrusion, I would look toward whether there's a history of requiring such a thing. Well, no. The history of requiring vaccines is because we've had significant pandemics and epidemics that have caused mass death and it's a, in a public health issue. Right. So even though it is a significant intrusion, it's, it's proportionate to what it's trying to prevent. So the argument here with the COVID vaccine is that it is not necessarily proportionate because it's not preventing transmission in the way that people thought. And also it's only really necessary to prevent deaths in kind of niche marginal groups of people with pre-existing conditions and things like that. That's why, and that, that is why the, the threshold for whether or not we should force vaccinations or mandate vaccinations is coming but down. But that's the argument. I, I guess I, I wouldn't, uh, that doesn't correspond to whether we're calling it intrusive. I mean, obviously, right, the argument for the vaccine being more intrusive, I, and I don't, I don't want to rank these things against each other. They're both intrusive, and I'm, both, I'm against both of them. So, and, and maybe for different reasons. I, I, the, the vaccine, you can't even, if you can't justify it as a public health measure, which you really can't anymore, you can justify it as a personal health measure, uh, but then it should just be left to the individual. 
Um, the, the the masks, I think, are again. It, it runs it runs the gamut. Some people are not having. Some people don't have trouble with them. Don't mind wearing them. Good. You can continue to wear them. Public health bureaucracy has now recognized the efficacy of one way masking, so you can protect yourself that way. But other people who struggle to socialize or breathe or whatever it is. While masked, I would I, I leave it also to their judgment, and I would be in that category. I don't like wearing it. Well, I'm sure you'll let us know in the comments whether or not a study showing that masking was effective would affect your willingness to wear a mask, or whether or not you think it should be mandated in an educational context. We'll continue having this conversation and more right after this.